Hey, do you ever think that the regular turn-based formula is getting a little stale? Yeah, you're right. Did you have something in mind to change it? Well, I've been playing Digimon for a while. You what? And I think we can do something crazy in Generation 6. What could we possibly take from Digimon? Mega Evolution, Mega Powerful. When holding a Mega Stone, select Pokemon have the power to Mega Evolve. Take your Pokemon to the next level. Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. Available October 12th worldwide. Pre-order now. Huh. You know, I think this might work. Everyone seems to really like this new gimmick. Hopefully we expand this to other Pokemon games in the future. Well, we probably can't. Why not? The competitive players say that it's too broken, and that they seem unbalanced. Oh no. We can't have them mad at us. Well, that wouldn't be out of the usual, but yes let's get rid of it in Gen 8, since we already put in Gen 7's post-game. Alright. I hope the casual fanbase will understand. We do not. How's it going everyone? Sight here again, and today I wanted to discuss the best gimmick for casual fans of Pokemon, the Mega Evolutions. Now I know some of you out there are already clicking away in the comments about how much Megas were broken and yada yada, but let me ask you something. How many people play competitive Pokemon versus people who don't and just simply play Pokemon games for the leisure? I think the answer will be a larger percentage of people just want to sit down, play Pokemon, and don't care that Mega Rayquaza is busted. So busted that Smogon at the time had to make an entire tier solely dedicated to just him. Mega Evolutions brought so much hype to Pokemon being the first major change to the formula after so long. And with the bonus of actually looking really cool, Game Freak created a hit gimmick that resonated with the casual fans to an incredible level. Every time they revealed a new Mega Evolution, it got the fandom hype. We started speculating on who's going to be the next one to get a Mega. If they're going to give it to the starters, or if returning Pokemon are also going to get a really cool new form. You had to really be there during the days of the Coral Coral League era to truly understand just how crazy this was to all of us. Every month we were just waiting for the leaks to drop from the magazine because then we knew the very next day Pokemon was about to drop a trailer showing them in action. You newer Pokemon fans are never going to experience that initial first gimmick hype, ever. Z moves, Dynamax, Terrestrialization, all those fail in comparison to Megas. Because not only did fan favorites get Megas, you got surprises like Beedrill, Marl, and freaking Heracross getting a Mega. You got people asking questions like, what's the new typing, or what kind of new abilities are, are they going to get? Speculation on Speculation was the name of the game, and the leak era was great. In comparison to now, in my opinion, Pokemon leaks are way too complicated for my liking. Like all those riddles and stuff, I don't have time for all that. Just give me the Pokedex leaks already. Mega Evolution is the best gimmick simply because it's the easiest to implement in a variety of different games outside of the mainline ones, and it's the one gimmick that I'm sure many fans will agree on, even if they don't really like it, that it's the best looking gimmick out of the main four. Let's look at the other gimmicks, shall we? Z moves are very flashy one hit moves that do big damage. Now the visual effects are pretty cool, but at the end of the day you don't really hear anybody crying over the loss of Z moves or anything like that, do you? They're pretty forgettable, at least in my eyes. Besides that one about Xerneas and Twinkle Tackle. Yeah, Game Freak, love that high quality animation you got there. Moving on to Dynamax, and oh boy, is this one of the gimmicks of all time here. You got Pokemon getting bigger. Like someone over there at Game Freak showed up to work with the larger Charizard next to a normal Charizard and said, yeah, this is the one. This is the new gimmick. I'm not sorry. Dynamax is the lamest gimmick to me, and when it was first shown, I truly thought Game Freak ran out of ideas when making Sword and Shield. Little did us casual fans and competitive Pokemon players know is that this gimmick will be hell for the game. Look, I'm no VGC player, but even I can tell how insanely broken this new gimmick was. You not only get an increase in health, but gain a lot of immunities as well. Like you can't be splinched, can't be affected by moves affecting weight, 
You can't be switched out. It even stops the effects of choice items from working until you're out of Dynamax. On top of all that, you have to deal with max moves now that causes a different effect based on the type of move it was. So now every time I use max air string, I get an increase in my speed by one stage. So I can stack three speed stages if I use it three times while still doing damage to my opponent. And get this, the buff also affects my allies if this was during a double battle. So now my other Pokemon is getting an easy buff without having to worry about losing out on damaging the opposing player's Pokemon. Basically, the mechanic was pretty busted and I'm sure no one is losing sleep now that it is gone. I know the BGC players aren't. Lastly, moving on to the current gimmick, Terrestrialization, which was introduced in our current generation, Gen 9. Now first and foremost, I can admit that this gimmick is good for competitive battling, it's way simpler than Dynamax, and not crazy busted. Basically, you can change your Pokemon type to the Terra type they possess while keeping the stab boost of the original type as well. So let's take Infernape for example, because Infernape is my favorite Pokemon, and give it the Electric Terra type. So now when I use Terra, it gains stab for Fire, Fighting, and Electric. It loses the Fire Fighting typing after becoming Electric, and gains the weakness of Electric type, i.e. Ground. The mechanic is pretty cool because it gives you the chance to make a pseudo triple type Pokemon or make a single type into a pseudo dual type instead. Now that's all cool. But what the heck is this? These hats are not it. Like seriously, who thought these goofy oversized hats were a cool design? Just look at this giant axe on my head. It looks like someone was axe drawing, missed the target, and hit my Pokemon instead. Like bro, I get it, you got a great idea. Not everyone needs to know. The hats are just dumb and goofy. Now that we cover those, let me tell you why Megas are the best fit for Pokemon. Unlike the other three gimmicks, Megas can be utilized to a higher degree, not just in main games, but to other games as well. They make multiple appearances in a lot of Pokemon spin-off games because they are just a better looking mechanic and easier ones to get casual fans to play their games with. Megas appear in Pokemon Go, Master EX, Pokemon Unite, multiple Japanese arcade games, Pokemon Shuffle, Rumble World, Picross, Pokemon Tournament, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and even Super Smash Bros. The fact that they even include Megas and Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee shows that they know that the casual fan base do want this gimmick still. And it's crazy that these games are the only ones that you're able to use Megas in since the Pokemon came over to the Switch. The Pokemon company knows that there is no topping this gimmick when appealing to the wider Pokemon audience. Yeah, Terra is cool for battling, but outside of that, who cares? When I can just unleash the power of Mega Lucario and fight Mario and Sonic and Smash Bros. I can have an actual match between a Mega Garchomp versus a Mega Blaziken in Pokemon Tournament, going blow for blow just how you would imagine it in the anime. When I press the button to Mega Ball, it feels like I'm going to the next level of power, kind of how it feels like I'm going Super Saiyan when playing Dragon Ball Z game, and that is one hell of a hype feeling. Mega is not being restricted by some type of restrictive lore that Game Freak makes up simply so it doesn't come back in the next game, allows it to be a great mechanic that can be put in a variety of games. Next, let's talk about how Pokemon themselves probably wouldn't do Megas again, but were too afraid to bring them back, so they made Gigantamax instead. They clearly wanted to catch the magic that Megas had, at least to me, because why else would you add exclusive forms to only a few selected Pokemon? Gigantamax is just two gimmicks, Megas and Z-moves roll into one with the form changes and big finisher-like moves. We can't even apply this to Ultra Necrozma, as it's the only Pokemon to transform using a Z Crystal. Funny thing here, if you know Digimon at all, you will know that the Ultra level is a higher tier than Mega level, which I kind of find just fine interesting. That's it, fun fact. Moving on to another point, how many of you play Pokemon fan games like Pokemon Insurgents or Pokemon Rejuvenation? Most fan games include Megas, even going so far as to create their own for their stories and regions. Because it's fun to come up with a cool or wild design for Pokemon that may not get any type of form change in the official Pokemon games. In fact, you may have seen a few videos here on YouTube giving various what if videos about a variety of new mega designs for a number of different Pokemon. Some even include them in their own fake Pokemon regions. Let me ask you this, how many people are coming up with a new Gigantamax form or a Z move? Hardly anyone and hardly anyone did, because no one cares about them. You can't do anything with Terra without asking having to make a new type because Terra can't gain anything new since it's tied to Pokemon types to begin with. I'm not done cooking just yet. You know what Megas provide you with better than those other gimmicks? Creativity and personality. Let me explain. Do you know how cool it is to see Pokemon characters with their own custom Keystone and Megastone holders? Like Cynthia's lipstick, 
Maxi's glasses, or even Steven's pen. Mega Stone users are allowed to express themselves to a greater degree when compared to other gimmicks. This also extends to individual Pokemons as well. Look at Skeptile sporting this cool looking scarf with his Mega Stone attached to it, or at Lane's Charizard's Mega Stone necklace. It gives each trainer a chance to give their ace Pokemon a unique and cool look compared to the other Pokemon. Like, don't tell me that you haven't thought of what you and your ace Pokemon Mega Stone holder will look like. And if you haven't, you're probably thinking about it right now. Could you imagine if Game Freak had given us options for various type of Keystone holders that we could have chose from back in X and Y? That would have been awesome. The Keystones and Mega Stones being actual accessories and equipment was a very fun and creative thing that the Pokemon X and Y anime did very well. In fact, they even extended this a bit in Sun and Moon with fan favorites like Missy and Brock getting their own Megas. You're not gonna get this same type of individuality from Terra Orbs. Free Terra Orb looks like Hammer's Terra Orb, which also looks like Elise Terra Orb, so on and so forth. The Dynamax band I can see being customized, but because Dynamax is kind of part of that sports culture that Galar was going for, I can see them being wristbands or some type of arm accessory. Even the anime shows everyone using the exact same type of band, not even different colors. They're just regulated sports equipment with no flair or individuality. And lastly, Z rings when shown in the anime only have different colors. That is all. They're basically looking like the Pokemon Power Rangers out here if you ask me. None of that is hype, none of that is appealing, when you got everyone looking the same. Mega is way more expressive and creative from a visual and character building standpoint. But Megas only go to the popular Pokemon, or to just the random ones like Aldino. At least the other three gimmicks apply to everyone. Yeah, sure, but don't sit here and tell me Game Freak don't still play favors or give out exclusive stuff to select individuals for either lore, hype, or story reasons. There are 17 exclusive Z moves, and two of those being Pikachu. Only difference is, one of them is wearing a cap. And there are 32 Gigantamaxing forms in Sword and Shield, most of them being the ace Pokemon of the Gala Gym Leaders or the Evil Team. Pokemon likes picking and choosing who gets what, and they always have. So here is what they could have done. Just pick and choose who get the next set of Megas in the next game. Problem solved. In fact, they wouldn't even need to try that hard. Give all the ace mons of the gym leaders Megas. Give the Leaf Four Megas. The champion, a Mega. The evil team leaders and admins if you want, Megas. And then the three starters, a Mega, and boom, you're golden. Add a couple of random and fan favorites, and you have the fan base eating out the palm of your hand. At least more than usual. And you're probably thinking that sounds like a lot of work. But like I just mentioned earlier, we got 32 Gigantamax forms that you are never going to be able to use again outside of Sword and Shield. We got 20 Paradox forms in Gen 9 due to Area Zero and Time Machine shenanigans. But are we going to get more outside of these games? And let me remind you of Ultra Necrozma, who we'll probably never see again until Sun and Moon remakes. Free him, Game Freak! At the end of the day, Megas are the best gimmicks, because they can be utilized in any number of ways here. They allow for greater creativity in how they're presented. It can be implemented in mainline games and spin-off games without any hassle, unlike Dynamax and Taros. The majority of casual Pokemon players will love them, and you can just make new ones for each game. Hell, even in spin-offs if you wanted to. The only thing stopping Game Freak from expanding their best gimmick is Game Freak themselves. But that's nothing out of the usual, I guess. I mean, these are the guys who got rid of Fishing and Scarlet and Violet for no reason at all, am I right? So, enough of my ramblings. Do you agree or disagree with what I said? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this type of discussions, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see even more videos like these. Please leave me a like on your way down to the comments, and I'll see you all in another video. Peace!